Okay, and finally we'll have Dr. Ellis who's gonna cover some hip apophyseal injuries. Good morning. Um, I certainly am uh, I'm excited that we got to bring this all together because it's very, uh, t this is such a common thing that we all see is these apophysitis and these overuse injuries. So it was quite nice for all of us to combine our heads and, and join us for one uh, continual talk. I appreciate your all's patience and uh, apologize for some repetition, but I do think it's important. Um, I'd also like to welcome all the online uh, viewers too. Uh, you know, we've, we've gone digital and we're really excited about that. So uh, I think we have uh, almost 20 uh, online viewers today. So I certainly want to welcome them and encourage them uh, to send us an email if you have any questions because we're monitoring the website. Uh, I'm going to talk about hip and pelvis apophysitis primarily around the pelvis. That's what we see it very often. And surprisingly enough, for such a common condition that we see so often, there's very, very little, little in the medical literature that guide us uh, for our treatment. Uh, I have no disclosures. Uh, starting off with two cases, uh, and I really brought two because we got to talk about the whole pelvis, it's not just one area, but I got a 15-year-old female, she's a runner, she likes to uh, run, track, uh, really all year round, she does cross country in the fall, track and field in the, in the spring, uh, she's starting to have hip pain with running, those are her images on the top there. Then we have a 16-year-old female, she's a gymnast, 25 hours plus per week, not uncommon for our patient population, and she has a little bit of back pain that she describes when she lands after overuse, not, not an acute episode. So we're gonna go to apophysitis of the hip and the pelvis. I usually use the term Oshkosh Schlatter of the hip. I use this term because everybody knows what Oshkosh Schlatter is, but I, I said Oshkosh Schlatter of the heel, the hip. Uh, so what is it? Ap ap apophysitis, uh, I find sometimes I have to describe to, to parents, but apo uh, is really Greek for away from, physis uh, is growth, and then itis is inflammation. So uh, these prominences that go, that, that uh, are your bony prominences, that really are your secondary growth centers that get inflamed uh, for many of the reasons that we've stated today, because the cartilage is softer and it gets irritated, uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. So when you look at this as an AP of your pelvis, uh, and when you think about your pelvis and you want to talk about all the apophysis around your pelvis, there's quite a few. We've got them all over the place. Uh, and when you, when you really want to take a critical look, it's, it's all where these tendons attach to that create this traction apophysitis. So commonly we'll see the hamstrings at your ischial uh, tuberosities. Uh, I've got your hip flexors, both at your ASIS and AIIS. Uh, and then you've got your hip abductors, also a little bit of hip flexors too around your iliac crest as well. And then your pubic symphysis, you've got your abdominal muscles, your adductor longus, uh, a few there. So you can see all of these muscular attachments to this, car to this cartilage secondary ossification is what causes this inflammation. Uh, and this is a, there's a particularly interesting curve that we use, uh, we, we, we like to use a lot, that, that second peak uh, during your growth spurt is really important and valuable because what really happens, what we've alluded to, is you have all of these cells that reproduce right into your growth plate and that's what happens when you go through your growth spurt is you have an increasingly amount of cell formation. Now that weakens the extracellular matrix. And what happens at that point is you have micro trauma with repetitive overuse and it causes these little minor injuries to that area. Well, when we don't give it time to heal or recover, what happens is, is it starts treating it like a fracture. They become bigger. And that's when you start developing these apophysis because your body starts to react to that micro trauma and that soft cartilage of that bone there. So going back to a couple cases here, here's, a, here's really what we see radiographically for apophysitis. You can see I got two images there, one at the ischial tuberosities where your hamstring attached, that's on the left, and then up high at your ASIS, uh, you see the irregularity. That just doesn't look like normal bone. It looks like cloudy bone. It's just, it's just not normal there. And so that really comes to light on our two cases here, in which you have a female runner that has pain when she runs, so her ASIS, where she has hip flexion, and then you have our gymnast, in which she complains of back pain, but it's really posterior gluteal region, uh, and, and that's where she has the ischial tuberosity apophysitis as well. Now, we've described this as traction apophysitis because it's recurrent stress of these tendons as they pull against the cartilage. It is an overuse condition. We think it's because they, they work too hard and they don't allow their body to recover. It is almost always activity related. Sometimes we'll hear an acute episode and then we start worrying about a non-displaced fracture. Um, and, and that's where if you hear that audible pop, I may advance some of my imaging modalities and be more concerned because I will worry that there's an apophyseal fracture there. I do think that our risk factors, generally speaking, are tight kids, the, the you know, tight muscle groups. Now, I can't go over all the muscle groups of the pelvis, but generally speaking, we think they're tight. 
We think this happens early in season when they don't really properly condition before they start and when they don't allow their bodies to recover. So it's just, it's the runner who runs all year round. Uh, in looking at each one specifically, now I'm, this is up here for your reference, but primarily your iliac crest. Your iliac crest has a lot of muscular attachment. It goes all the way to the back. So sometimes this can be confused with back pain. We see this in our long distance runners, our gymnasts primarily, uh, but we can also see it in other sports. Your AIIS, a little bit harder to diagnose on physical exam. It is from your rectus, so one of your hip flexors. We do see it in your long distance runners uh, as well as your gymnasts. Uh, your ischial tuberosity, soccer players, gymnasts primarily. This is where your hamstrings attach, okay? Uh, and then you have your pubic symphysis here. I primarily see it by practice at soccer players, uh, but it's right in the center of your groin, uh, and that's where we see osteitis pubis as well, or inflammation of the growth plate uh, at that portion of your pelvis. Now, this is older than some of the other apophysitis we've talked about, and the reason is, is these secondary growth plates, they actually form and fuse later in life. So we think of this 14 14-year-old female, 16-year-old male as skeletally mature, but the reality is in their pelvis, it's clearly not. You can see that some of these, uh, the appearances of the secondary ossification center and closures are actually much older than other parts of your body. So even your 16 skeletally mature male will still have apophysitis around their pelvis. And so you need to think about that in your differential. So how is it diagnosed? I find this to be a very easy diagnosis, particularly around the hip, because it's tenderness palpation right at that bony region, or you isolate the muscle group and they reproduce the pain with resistance of that muscle group. So when you look at the pelvis, uh, your iliac crest, we can all feel our iliac crest. Even if we have a few love handles, you can still find your iliac crest around there. ASIS, same thing. You can always palpate this on almost anybody. Uh, pubic symphysis, a little bit more of a challenging location to palpate, but oftentimes if this is tender, you've got the diagnosis as well. And then ischial tuberosity, I like to do this prone, and I'll do prone, and I like to, I like to put my finger right at the uh, origin of the hamstrings. Uh, this end out here, it, it, I do not believe that these all need uh, x-rays. Uh, however, oftentimes once they, t once they come to see me, we will get x-rays. Uh, the reality is, is I do think x-rays assist with the diagnosis if it is unclear. Uh, I traditionally refer to an AP frog of the pelvis. Uh, you can see even here, this gentleman who has osteitis pubis, you can see irregularity uh, of that growth plate right in the center. This should be really smooth bone, and you can see how it just looks a little bit fragmented or even uh, uh, just irregular uh, through there. Extensive differential diagnosis. You got to worry about things like intra-abdominal. Females may have some ovarian cyst. Hernias you've got to think about. And certainly in these long distance runners, I always worry about stress fracture uh, of the hip as well. So how is it treated? Rest, rest, rest. Uh, you've seen that on many of our slides uh, so far because we can't advocate that uh, certainly enough. I do think cross training is a reasonable option. Uh, with activity modification, you could change what you do. You don't have to stop doing sports you don't have to stop you know, exercising, but maybe not running. Uh, try something else. Do something for 60 days, 90 days. Uh, in severe cases, I do think weight-bearing restriction can help. Uh, absolutely no running uh, for eight weeks. And then once they're pain-free, doesn't mean they can start going back to the activity. Oftentimes, I, I, I recommend them to wait four additional weeks uh, before they go back. Now, when you think of beyond or some of the more resilient cases, I do think physical therapy, particularly in these athletes, is really important. And I advocate it for almost all of my resilient apophysitis. I do think that it's important, particularly during the rest period as well. I think passive motion early on can be extremely valuable. Uh, once you're pain free, you can start working on some gentle stretching, but don't overdo that early on when they're still in the inflammatory phase of the condition. Uh, muscular balance, sometimes this is because one area is too strong and the other one is not compensating or there's compensatory problems occurring. Physical therapists are teaching me a lot about this frequently. So muscular balance could be really uh, important. There is a few reports of this in the uh, medical literature about a bone stimulator, uh, small case series. Uh, don't use this routinely in my practice and it can be very, very expensive. Uh, surgery and the use of biologics. Uh, on some resilient cases, I do think that this may be worth discussion. Uh, I've had a few patients in which we've had this conversation and even proceeded to the surgical, but I'm, I'm afraid that it's just too early to really know if there's a scientific, uh, really great rationale behind it. So uh, it is a common overuse condition and it is in the older adolescents, uh, talking about hip and pelvis apophysitis. Um, I do think the diagnosis is primarily clinical, and that's really a, a bit of common theme for all areas of apophysitis that we've talked about today. And the treatment is rest. It really is. 
Uh, we cannot mimic this with anti-inflammatories or special physical therapy or special ejection or PRP or blood products. The reality is, is they've got to rest or change their activity. Uh, if we want to augment that with some other modalities, we could do that, but we really have to emphasize that rest is the primary treatment uh, for all of these conditions. So thank you very much. I appreciate your time and welcome any questions.